Starseeds Problems, Part 3, Places and Buildings Astral Entities, Alcohol and More. Hello, thank you for joining me here for one more video. I am Marie Swaru, writing from my room on the port side front section of Starship Talika. This is a continuation of my video about starseeds and their frequency mismatch problems while living on Earth. I will describe here the most energetically dangerous places for high-frequency people and why. This problem applies to anyone who has a higher frequency than the average and not only to starseeds. That's why I initially included in the title Lightworkers and Awoken People, although it is simply too long for YouTube and it's not practical to mention them all while I write. Although I do include them all, people, human or not, and animals as well, so I will mostly simply use the word starseed. I need to say that it's not only people who drain a high-frequency person, such as a starseed. It can also be places and situations. Many buildings hold a very low vibratory state that can bother and even sicken a starseed. Places such as banks, government buildings, and large ugly housing complexes, among many others, keep their frequency very low because of the kind of activities that go on in them or have happened in them. But the places that hold the lowest vibration and, therefore, are the ones that are the most sickening to starseeds and lightworkers are the following, churches and religious temples, places of worship and control. These places are designed from their basement upwards precisely to manage and channel emotional, mental, and soul energy from the people. They are built on top of energetic points on Earth, such as ley lines and vortex points. This is also why at least most churches and temples are built on top of older buildings that were also used as worship places by cultures that preceded them, such as pre-Hispanic temples and pyramids or over ancient Druidic gathering places. The places used for worship in the past, and today, with a church or any temple of any other religion, are set for a reason in those specific places. They are highly magnetic and energetical points that help potentiate their desired effects over the people. How the ones that built the temples know this may remain a mystery, but for me, it is a clear indication of intervention from individuals that have a high level of technology to detect those places, and I mean since a very long time ago. Moreover, many of those places where churches have been built have entrances to the underworld. Churches and temples have openings hidden in their basements, especially the older ones. These secret openings are usually found underground in the crypts, among human bones and coffins, where few normal people dare go into. Those secret openings lead to passageways that interconnect those churches and temples to other ones nearby and far away, as well as to secret exits to the outside world. Most of those ancient and not-so-ancient passageways were artificially built and served as secret escape routes in times of persecution. Christians, among many other creeds, have been persecuted throughout history for innumerable reasons, so they all had to devise and build escape tunnels, routes and mechanisms. But not all the tunnels are artificial, as many churches and temples have openings that lead to underground caverns and some also lead to the inner earth where other non-human dangerous creatures live. This is important to know. A direct example of this, I dare disclose, are the tunnels under old churches on the island of Crimea, and that were built back in the times of the Crusades. Those lead into deep caverns which are known to lead deep to the inner earth and are openings and exit points for reptilian-based entities. Many explorers in the past have vanished in these caverns and openings without a trace, and those churches are now heavily guarded. Many churches are fronts and disguises for underworld openings, both artificial and natural. And some of the most important ones are found in large cities such as Rome, London, Paris, Edinburgh, and Washington DC, among many others. They also lead directly to high-speed transit underground transport systems and or deep underground bases that are whole cities underground. This is why those places are called holy places because they have holes in them, portals, and underground openings. Listen to the wording. You can get many clues there. But coming back to what sickens starseeds directly, the mere architecture of churches and temples is designed from the ground up to suck the soul energy out of the people. 
If you look past the artwork, the whole place is designed to make people feel small, vulnerable and helpless next to such a grandiose display of power. Moreover, the images, statues, and symbols convey a message and a feeling of deep suffering, all designed for one purpose, to promote and impose fear into the hearts of those visiting, to belittle the human spirit into submission. Even the external architecture is designed to channel energy from the people inside the church and into the etheric field surrounding it. This is why churches have steeples and pointed appendages pointing up to the sky, exactly where big portals to the lower astral are found right above them. They help create an energy vortex point on top of them, where lower astral beings can come in and out of the material realm because that vortex creates nothing other than a strong portal to the underworld. And that is why churches and temples are essentially structures that create and potentiate portals that lead to the lower astral because, as I described in several of my videos, lower astral entities of all kinds do mingle with human beings, and they can alter small events that may cause a chain reaction that leads to human suffering, and that is exactly what they eat and what they feed from. When the vibratory state and frequency of a person are low enough, it becomes compatible with one of those lower astral entities therefore permitting them to manipulate those living people. Both implanting thoughts and thought patterns into their minds that cause them to make bad decisions and to have ill, aggressive, and self-destructive thoughts that feed those entities. In other words, churches and temples are designed as feeding grounds for astral entities of the kind the controllers of earth worship in their hideous rituals. And ultimately, this is the case for just about all the low-frequency places, buildings, and constructions. Because as they hold a low vibration, they logically will be a nesting and feeding ground for those lower astral entities of all kinds. Any place that promotes feelings of anxiety, suffering, and pain will be a low frequency spot, and whatever holds a low frequency will cause a bridge, an opening, or a portal to the lower astral. Same for places where death has occurred, such as hospitals, old battlegrounds, buildings, and houses that had something horrible happen in them. Frequency and energy do remain in the minerals and materials they are built with, as a natural magnetic hard drive, and it is very difficult to reprogram new higher energy into them, but not impossible. What makes it so difficult is that a low frequency place will be a nest and a portal to the underworld or lower astral, so all kinds of entities, some disincarnate human souls and others that may only be lower astral animals such as aura parasites will make those places their own and perceive those places as their property. Therefore, many times they will even defend it from what they perceive to be human intruders. Many times, a murder may have taken place in a house, for example, causing it to ultimately be haunted because the soul of the deceased person has not yet found peace, as it is said often. But this may not necessarily be the case, as the simple fact of there being such a low frequency in that place or house is enough for other entities to plague the premises, taking it over as their place of residence, therefore causing the visible effects of the haunted. Moving on, logically, another very low frequency place would be cemeteries, which usually are found next to a temple or a church on the same grounds. Many say cemeteries are not good places to find ghosts, as they have already left the remains of their physical bodies and will not remain on the premises. Although this, at first sight, may be a logical assumption, people who have crossed over to the spirit world no longer hold the concept or the experience of linear time. Therefore, maybe they're next to the remains of their body, and for them, their death has happened recently and they are still in the process of assimilating their new disincarnate state. This not meaning in any way that they have gotten lost or strayed away from their path to the afterlife, so they may still be there from a point of view of the living. But then there is yet another factor that makes cemeteries a dangerously low-frequency place, and it is that there is much human suffering associated with those places, logically. And, therefore, it is a perfect place to find all kinds of portals that lead to the lower astral, which allow entities to access the world of the living. Therefore, cemeteries are perfect nesting and feeding grounds for everything found in the lower astral. 
Visiting cemeteries without a strong high personal frequency and vibration is a very bad idea because if a living person holds a low enough and compatible frequency with any of those lower astral entities, they may attach themselves to the living person's aura, and he or she may take the entity back home with them. Children are very vulnerable to astral attachments, the younger, the more vulnerable they are because their aura field has not developed yet, and neither has their personality and their strength of character. Young children are full of life force, and that alone may provoke feelings of envy and need from dark astral entities, causing them to want to attach themselves to the child, as they are so full of vital energy. Cemeteries are probably the worst commonly found place to take a child into, and I insist that you should never, ever take a child to a cemetery. This is very important. The next places that hold a dangerously low vibration are jails and psychiatric hospitals. All hospitals hold a very low vibration because of all the human suffering and the deaths associated with those places, as would be expected. But psychiatric hospitals are the worst kind because of the heavy astral parasitation many, if not all, patients have and are what cause their symptoms and ill behaviors. And as for jails, there is always a lot of suffering, despair, and pain going on in those places to the point where it is even said that the whole place is being run by dark entities directly from the astral. Government buildings also hold extremely low frequency and vibration because they are control centers for humanity. So astral entities like to be there, whispering ill ideas into the easily controllable minds of those government officials, ideas that will affect an entire population, most usually in a bad way. Moreover, many government buildings are old and have been used before for other shadier purposes, so they naturally hold a memory of ugly things. Then there are other places that are low-frequency astral entity feeding grounds, such as nightclubs and low-life endeavor places, which are rich environments for portals, feeding, and nesting grounds for dark astral entities. And it is easy to get an unwanted attachment from such places. Alcohol consumption also lowers a person's frequency and promotes astral parasitation, making the person compatible in frequency with lower astral entities because alcohol lowers the subject's mind and willpower. This is also why alcoholic beverages are called spirits. Every word is there for a reason. Pay attention to the wording. Although I respect each one of your decisions about what you put into your mouth, I strongly discourage the consumption of any alcoholic beverages. This is also why having an alcohol problem causes a downward spiral in the quality of life of the individual and can destroy it completely. This is exactly the kind of emotional suffering dark astral entities want and need for their survival. For those aware enough, it is easy to detect places that hold a low vibration. Pay attention to how you feel wherever you are and when you go into one or another place. Don't dismiss that feeling, trust your intuition. If a place feels sick, it probably is a low-frequency area, and you cannot always know why. The place may simply be a store or a mall, but you don't know what it was built on, why, or what else is going on nearby. If any place or anything feels sickening for you, then it is. You don't really need more data. How you feel in each place or about anything is what counts. Having a strong and stable aura field, holding your vibration high, also using high energy potentiating objects such as amethyst crystals and other beautiful minerals can help you stay and keep your aura strong while you are in those low frequency places, should it be necessary for you to be in one. Never fear those places, remember that. Fear is one of the mechanisms astral entities have to control and take over your mind, as well as to absorb and feed from your vital energy. Be fearless always, but here I mean when you enter a low-frequency place, make them fear you, not you them. And as a last note, although human technology is said that it cannot detect astral entities, ghosts, and so on, the technology of other more advanced civilizations can detect them very easily using interferometer readings, gravity and mass displacements and advanced optical lenses that can detect subtle ultra-low and ultra-high light waves and energy patterns. Ghosts and astral entities are not theory and are not metaphysics for highly advanced interstellar civilizations. They are proven scientific fact. 
I strongly suspect human technology can also detect all those entities, but it's not available to the public, mostly for population control and manipulation purposes. Thank you for watching my video and for liking and subscribing for more. I hope to see you here next time. Take care and be strong. Your friend. Marie Soiru.